Welcome everyone, it's Chris Petrie. Hey, this is just another quick uh, intro um, to my video. I want to thank everyone for coming by. Thanks for all the beautiful comments, the current encouragement. Everyone out there, thank you so much. I know many of you have been following me for a long time and uh, I just want to say that I appreciate everyone here uh, that joins along and paints with, you know, paints with us. We, we have such a great time here. We have a lot of fun. We do a lot of paintings, we work hard, and we're, watercolors are always getting better. So uh, I know everyone that's out there painting with me for years now, your paintings are getting always better. You're having more fun and enjoying your watercolors more, and that's why I'm here. I love teaching on YouTube, and it's my favorite place to be. So um, we're going to get started in just a second, but I just wanted to show the beginning part here. This is the finished painting. We just finished it a second ago, and um, so we can look at this here. You can work from this finished painting if you want. You can pause the video on this. and draw and paint from this. You can also stop the video. We do the sketch, so we do the preliminary sketch of this painting first. Second part, we do the uh, contour drawing where we go over the top of our light sketch with our darker pencil lines, and then we finally paint the painting. So you will see all three parts, how it works, and we explain everything in detail so you won't have any uh, questions as far as how we're doing everything. We're going to show you step by step here how you do everything right, right through the whole process. So this is the finished painting of what it's going to look like and we also mentioned you can do this in really large format or you can just work with a smaller format like this one here which is an 8 by 10 approximately. So have fun with this one, enjoy it, let's get right into it and um, we'll have some fun and uh, we'll get started in just a second. Hello, hello, it's Chris Petrie here. Welcome everyone, thanks for coming by. Hey everyone, thanks so much for coming by each week on my channel. We're painting together, we're having a great time. Uh, thanks for all the awesome comments, the great comments out there, all of you, I appreciate that so much. Uh, you have, so many of you give me such, you know, encouragement and exciting uh, comments. Keeps me going, keeps me excited for creating more videos here on YouTube and I'm excited. And I plan on being here a long time, so let's just keep going. Keep learning new techniques, new methods in watercolor. Here we're going to do a beautiful watercolor painting of some flowers, some simple flowers. We're going to show you how you can just take 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and have a beautiful painting. Uh, you can take this painting. We're doing like an 8x10, but you could take this painting and make it on a large, like, you know, 18x24 uh, format, 18 inch by 24 inch uh, painting. That's fine too. So you can enlarge or paint smaller. It's up to you. Main thing is if you do want to create larger paintings, and I always try to throw in some extra information here, little tidbits of, you know, tidbits of information so you can kind of get a little more uh, information as we go here. I like to put as much information as I can in my videos. So, you know, if you're going to go with a larger uh, painting, you know, you're just going to want to use larger brushes. And that's really the simple part of watercolor paintings. If you're going to go larger with your paper size, you just need to use larger brushes. So you might get a filbert brush or, you know, I have myself, I have lots of uh, round brushes. I use mostly round brushes. This is more of a smaller round brush, a number six. So that's fine for an eight by 10. But if you're going to upsize and paint larger, you know, you can use mop brushes. So you can take some beautiful mop brushes, really large mop brushes like this. This happens to be an Alvaro Castanet number 10. Uh, mop brush so you can paint flowers, beautiful flowers with mop brushes using really large paper. So you might want to create really large paintings. They're very powerful, very impactful. A lot of times, you know, smaller paintings, people complain about them that they're just not that impactful. I like smaller paintings myself and I do them on YouTube here because they work better for the camera and being able to work in a smaller format for the videos that we create here. But always feel free to make larger paintings, go bigger, that's fine. You just scale up everything. You know, you're going to do a bigger drawing, you're going to use a larger paper, you're going to use bigger brushes. Uh, you might use a larger palette too. So just think, if you're going to go with a larger painting, you're probably going to make everything larger. You're going to go with larger brushes, you'll go with a larger uh, paint box, or you know, you might get one of those plastic, big plastic palettes, or you could use one of those butcher trays, or you could even find your own, you could use like a, a pan. Uh, when I first started watercolor, I used to use... Um, like baking pans. I would take baking pans and squeeze my paint in the baking pan and just mix it around. One of those uh, white, uh, uh, I guess, uh, the corning pans, uh, baking dishes. So you can be creative, whatever you have, just use that. But you know, you can go larger, make the paintings larger again, larger brushes, you'll need larger uh, palette, usually, to get more uh, larger washes and be able to move around some paint a little in a, in a more open format. 
but let's let's get back to our focus here which is just we're going to do a approximately an 8 by 10 portrait style painting so the painting is upwards like this just like the, the my phone is and here on my phone I just went on my uh, search engine I used Google went on Google and I searched out uh, some poppy flowers beautiful red poppy flowers L looked through five or ten different 20 different photos found one I liked then I zoomed in on a couple of the flowers within the photo so I cropped the photo that I was looking at and then I just did a screen capture which is basically you have to look up for each different phone you might have you just have to learn you have to do like a YouTube search on how to do a, cre a screen capture or a screenshot so if you follow that method of doing a screenshot you do the screen capture through screenshot and then once you do that you save it to your photos and then you go back into your photos file open it up and then you can just leave your phone on like this and I think I have my phone so that it doesn't shut off. Let's take a look just so we see here. Uh, let's take a look. Settings. Display and brightness. Auto lock. Never. So your auto lock feature on your iPhone, if you're using an iPhone, would be on never. So you don't want to have your phone screen shut off and go dark. You want to leave it so that it's always on. on and it never shuts down or shuts off the uh, the uh, brightness of your screen. Once you have that, auto lock is on never. Then you have your, go to your photos, and then you have your photos there. That, and you did this, you cropped your photo down. So I just, again, I went on YouTube, I mean on uh, Google, did a Google search for photos. You can pick any flower you want. Here we happen to be using some poppy flowers, some beautiful red poppy flowers. I found a photo I liked. I cropped it, made it, enlarged it, and then did my screen capture, my screenshot, clicked on it so that it saved it just like this. And then I saved it to my photos. So those of you, you can work from photos from newspapers, you can use photos from magazines, uh, you could use your laptop or an iPad or even your TV screen. However you like to do it, just giving you some tidbits of information here on how I get my photos and my reference material for my um, my paintings here that we do. So this is my reference photo. And I, you can also use watercolor books if you have some watercolor magazines, books, whatever. Clip, you know, clip out a picture, tape it up on the uh, on your table that you work on or wherever you work. And you just use that. So I'll set this across from me. And then I'm going to just uh, pencil draw this. This time I will pencil draw it with um, a... Uh, these are a little bit darker the uh, darker pencils you can get the the leads you can buy all different style lead pencils some are very soft lead which makes a very dark mark and then sometimes if you have a very hard lead pencil it'll make a very light mark so you do it the way you want this happens to be let me see if I can find this in my studio I'll be right back Alright, I thought I had them at hand, but I, I do not, but these are Statler pencils. So you can order these single, like one, you can order these online, or at your art store they have them usually. Statler pencils. They're kind of easy to, to see. They're very unique. They have a very, they're uh, called Mars Lumograph. Statler is the brand. This is an 8B, so it's a soft lead. Um, so you can use these to draw. It gives an interesting look. So we're going to do a, we're going to have lots of dark pencil lines on this one and we'll see how that looks and it's heat blue it's a nice cerulean blue cerulean blue color with the black tip on it like this and a white stripe so you can kind of find these pretty easy if you're looking for them so let's start out we'll do our uh, drawing here so I'm just going to use my reference photo and I'm just going to start and kind of look at it and say alright where's the, the first flowers about here I'll do a super light sketch just to get everything where I think it's going to be, like that. There's another flower over here. And it's about, it starts about there, like that, like so. Then we have another one up here in the center. The 
and there's a a bud here on the uh, and uh, this goes over here like so so we're just kind of taking our time I'm doing a light sketch hopefully you can see that we'll go over it with a darker sketch in just a second I just want to get the get it really light first just so I kind of make sure I get everything in the right spot that looks good and there's some more And there's another. Okay, so great. What I did was I did a preliminary sketch here, which is a super light sketch. And I put it in doing a, you know, contour style, just going around the whole picture with a light, super light sketch, you know, drawing, very light, just outlining things to see where they're all at. And it looks good. I've got everything where I want it. I have one flower over here, I have another flower up here, and I have another large flower here. So I have three flowers, one, two, and three. And then there's some small buds, some of these small buds, um, poppy buds here and there. So this looks good. I am not going to draw in that. There was like a hill in the background. I don't think I'm going to draw that in. I think I'm just going to leave it, the flowers, and then the light background. So we'll see how that looks. I think it's going to look really beautiful. All right, so let's take a quick break. We did a lot of stuff here already. We've covered a lot of material. I know I sometimes talk fast, but I know you're smart. You're the artist. You're smart. You can pick up on this stuff quickly. If you have to jot down some notes, please do it. Please jot down some notes if you have to. Or go back to the beginning and watch it a second or third time. Is Whatever you need to do to get the basics down, because the basics are what you really want to get in these videos. Jot down some notes. And then, uh, you know, watch the video full through and paint along with it, you know. And watch it as many times as you have to. And always remember, please subscribe. There's a subscribe button down below on the right-hand side. If you hit that subscribe button, you're going to get these videos every week. Sometimes we make two, three videos a week. Most times we make about one or two. But you'll get the videos. And if you hit this uh, notification bell, which is um, when you hit the subscribe button, a notification uh, bell will appear and you just click all notifications. And this way, every time we make a new video, you know right away when we make it. It'll give you an alert on your YouTube uh, uh, screen when you're on YouTube. So you'll see that we're making a new video. So I hope you'll join us each time. Please do. You'll learn a lot. And we'll have fun, too, at the same time. We're just going to show you how to make a quick, fast, fun, easy watercolor with beautiful red flowers. Um, quickly, effectively, and uh, you can make it any size you want. And it's a great painting to do quickly, and you can put a... Uh, mat over the top and a frame it'll look great you can put it on your wall you can share it with some friends you can give it as a gift maybe you put it into a gallery show whatever it is get excited because when you, when you do a painting like this nice fast free painting it's gonna look great and people are gonna really be excited about it okay so I guarantee you you're gonna have a lot of fun doing this painting we'll be right back we'll do the painting portion and uh, you'll be excited and we'll have fun together okay we'll be right back All right, we're back again and we're getting started here. Um, I'm just going to sharpen my uh, pencil here a little bit. So I just sharpened my pencil. Um, really good to have a good point on this pencil here. Again, I'm using a Statler pencil and it's uh, the Mars Lumograph um, line of pencils and it's an H, uh, an 8B, so an 8B uh, lead which is nice and soft. We're going to get some beautiful lines here. And now we're going to do a second drawing over the top of our first. So remember when we started, we did a super light uh, drawing light sketch, just, just a, around the silhouette of the our, our subject matter, our beautiful poppy flowers. And we, uh, using, we're using our, I'm using a phone for my subject matter, but you can use anything. You can use your phone. You can use some clippings from magazines from newspapers, you can use, ah, you can use anything. You can use uh, something from your uh, laptop if you have, or your personal computer, 
um, you know, something from uh, maybe even as simple as something like a uh, box of uh, some kind of uh, food or anything, any kind of advertising type things. You can just anything that you can get creative and find something you like that has a nice picture of some flowers on it, you can use that. You can use books, um, of course. Um, anything like that will work. So I'm using my phone, happens to be a great way when you use a phone or a laptop, you can research different you know, flowers and so forth and pictures, and then you can kind of save those and, and then uh, work with those. You can print them out on a printer if you have a printer. And so I'm just using my phone though. I just uh, leave my phone screen so that it stays on all the time and it's lit all the time and it doesn't shut off. And uh, I covered that in the beginning of the video. If you happen to skip over it and you didn't see that, you just go back to the beginning of the video and I describe how you can take your phone and uh, ensure that it doesn't go dark for you. So you can leave this on for an hour if you want and work from it. So again, I'm putting it across from me on my table. And again, now we're going to do, I'm going to do a little darker drawing over the top of my preliminary light sketch. So you always want to do your preliminary light sketch just to make sure you get everything in your, uh, rectangle so you have your rectangle here and you want to make sure that you get everything in your rectangle you want to for your subject matter your picture and um, have it in the proper dimensions that you want to so you you draw your rectangle and then you want to just use your let's say your subject matter that you have your picture your phone picture a magazine clipping whatever it is you want to make sure you're creating the same scale of what you're looking at. Like, for instance, you, you would really, you would want to avoid having your rectangle look like this. So here's your paper, your watercolor paper. You'd want to, you'd want to avoid having a small grouping of flowers like this, like that. Does that make sense? Because your picture that you're looking at and what made you think it was exciting was the. The, the dynamic picture, which is a large flower here, and a large flower here, and a large flower over here, and then some smaller little, you know, um, things here, some uh, buds from the uh, stems here. So that's that's what why we do that light sketch first, so that we get all of these larger shapes, our flower shapes, correct in our rectangle, so that we don't wind up with that um, really. Uh, unpleasant look where you have a large rectangle of space and then you have just small little bits of subject matter like that. That doesn't look too pleasing. That wouldn't be exciting for a painting if you're just going to have a couple little small flowers like that. You want to fill up your rectangle with lots of powerful color, exciting color. Does that make sense? All right, so let's do it. Let's do a darker drawing over the original preliminary light sketch. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to start up here and I'm just going to go around. And, uh, you know, you can go darker. You can take it, your pencil and roll it around a little bit. You can get as creative and fun as you want. You don't have to go by all the rules all the time. You can break the rules and do some different things. So here I'll go with some finer lines. Then maybe I'll go with some darker lines over here like that. And I'll just have a good time with this like that. And then here, and then there's a stem like that. So I'm going to make my stems real fast and just kind of go with the flow. There's another stem. Here's another. This is a bud with a stem. So we'll just do that. Then here, I'm just going to get some little bit of ideas so that I um, have some of the shadows within the flower itself and the center of the flower worked out. So here's a little darker shadow. So I'll just do a little bit of shading there and a little bit of shading here. So do a little bit of shading if you want to put a little darker shadow within your flower just so you have that. So you recall when you're painting to add in a little darker tone there. Alright, so there we go. We got that going. And then we're going to go down here. Let's start out with this one here. This is a large flower here in the foreground. And we just leave it like that. And then we put the center of the poppy flower here, like that. Then there's another one over here. Let's OK, 
Okay, then there's an uh, underside here, which is a little more sh in shade, in shadow. So I'll put a little bit of shadow there. And then we have a gorgeous, to the center of the flower here. Just like that. That's the center of the flower. And there's the dark. So I'm going to just do a little dark shading here with my pencil. I hope you don't mind I do that. This is just so that I, you know, you can even leave this a pencil drawing and just put a tiny bit of wash over it. You know, you can create all kinds of different looks with your watercolors. Maybe you like pencil drawings a lot. You can maybe just do some pencil drawings and then maybe just touch a little bit of wash on the paper and not go with a heavy wash. It's up to you. Um, you be as creative as you like, you know. If you want to differ from what I do a little bit, that's fine too. You'll you'll still be in the same ballpark of what I'm doing if you're kind of doing mostly what I do, but maybe taking a little bit of a, a different course of action as you go. So this way you might feel a little better. You might think that you're doing something a little different. Your own create creativity is more happening with your art and maybe you're not just copying what I'm doing. It's all up to you, but it never hurts to just follow a process. So I think you've seen here how I did this. I've just basically got some lines on this here, my contour drawing. I made some shadow here in the center. I'm following my photograph, seeing where the shadows and the darks and lights are. So I'm adding some shading with my pencil to get some of those shadow areas. And then on the underside of these um, blooms here, these small blossoms, they're darker on the bottom. They're more rounded like that. We try to always look at the real sh the shapes of things really accurately, so that they do look r really accurate to to what we're, s we're we're looking at in our photographs. So that you know, when someone who may be a person that really enjoys flowers and maybe plants a lot of flowers and works with flowers, whatever. They're going to look at it and go, oh yeah, immediately they recognize it because they see we followed, we followed the real shapes of the flowers and the plants and the, the buds here of these, these flowers. Um, and it looks really good and it looks like it's reading true. You know, if we kind of just don't pay attention to the actual shapes, we can go off the beaten track and next thing you know, it's looking different. So you can kind of see these kind of look like acorns, these uh, buds here. They look like acorn shapes. And these are very free looking flower shapes, so we're not really too... This one's quite round. This one here has more of a, a rectangular or square shape to this one. It's kind of the angle it's on. And um, But other than that, I think we did a good job here. So we will take another quick break just for a few seconds and then we'll come back and we'll we'll start getting paints on the paper but I wanted you to see the first preliminary sketch light sketch second process second part of the process here going in and doing your darker pencil drawing over the top of your light sketch and you can even get in a little more darks if you want and use your pencil with for a little bit of shading just to help you remember where to put your shadows once you start painting. Because once we start painting, does this make sense? Once you start painting, you got to go a little faster. So you can get some marks on your paper first to help you know where you're going to put some of those darker darks. That'll just help you be able to go faster in your painting and, you won't ha and painting. And you won't have to stop and really think too much. You just know right away, okay, good, I know where my darker shadows are. Because I shaded them in a little bit with my pencil when I did my second pencil drawing over the top of my first preliminary sketch. Does this make sense? All right, fantastic. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back, everybody. This is uh, Chris, and we're going to get started with our painting. Um, we're going to use just a number six here. Uh, this is a Raphael brush, number six watercolor brush. So I'm going to use a round brush. Um, you could use um, really, uh, you know, there's there's so many different brushes out there. Find the brush that you like the best. Um, they make good synthetic brushes. Um, Raphael is a natural hair brush, but you can get synthetic brushes. I like Princeton synthetic brushes. They're really good. Uh, I think I have one right here. This is a synthetic Princeton brush, a round. 
It's called a Neptune, Princeton Neptune Round Number 8. Very similar to this brush. You can see the brush hairs are pretty close in size. You have a nice point on both of them. If I wet the brush, you can kind of see that there's a nice point on it. On this one here, and then the same with the Neptune. If I wet the Neptune Number 8 Round, you'll see that there's a good point on that one too. So this is a synthetic brush, Princeton uh, Neptune. I got this one online. I think I ordered it on Amazon. And this one here uh, as well I got uh, online, ordered online. And this is a Raphael. Um, and it's a Holbein, I mean a Kalinske uh, France Raphael brush. So I'm going to use this, my uh, Raphael brush. Okay, we're going to do some beautiful reds. Let's use some cadmium red. And um, cadmium red. So we'll get some of our red out onto the uh, palette. Um, let's do some cadmium red, red and alizarin crimson too as well. And maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. Like that, maybe a little darker, more grayish color. Maybe add a little. We can add a little French ultramarine in there. A little bit darker. Okay, so I'll make a darker for the middle. Let's start right out. We'll do this center area here. So we get our paint out on there. Then we're going to go with the center of the flower. So I'm going to use some ivory black, Payne's gray. Rinse off my brush. Uh, use sometimes a tissue or my apron. I dry off a little bit of the paint. Get a little bit of the um, burnt umber and some French uh, ultramarine blue just to make it a little darker and more interesting. And then we'll do that. We'll put in some the center of the flower like that. Just like that. And then we'll go back in with some of that red and French ultramarine blue for a little purplish shadow color. go. Then as we get out towards the outer part of the flower, some alizarin crimson and cadmium red, lighter wash, like that. Do a couple splashes just to loosen up a little bit here. And again, we're having fun with this. We're trying to make things fun and happy, like that. Then, as we do that and lighten up on the outer edges, we can still go in and do more, infuse some more paints in there. Take some straight, straight tube paint, no water, and get that in there. Fuse it right into that first little wash we did quick, and there you have it. Then you might want to go with some purple, maybe some purple here for that shadowy look in the center. So we put a little bit of purple in there ultramarine violet like that for some then I'll do some maybe just some brush strokes like this outwards like this away from the center of the flower like this like that a couple more splashes good let's go up here we'll do the same thing we're going to use the same process cadmium red alizarin crimson for the lighter wash areas, so we make that a little bit more water. Then for the darker areas of the red, the more shadowy areas of red, we dry off our water off our brush and we go in so we don't get too much water in our in our mix here. Let's do some cadmium red, burnt sienna, maybe some purple, like that. 
get those shadow shapes here like that. Then we'll do the lighter wash, like that. Okay, and then a little bit of purple over here for the shadow side. And then we'll go in and pick up our red up here. And again, you can always infuse more red. Make it exciting. Once you get on a little bit of water and paint on your paper, don't be afraid to go back in and add some straight color with no water just to give it some more lively color. There we go. Maybe even a little bit of cadmium orange to mix in there, here and there. Remember to add it everywhere. Don't just add one color one place. Add it everywhere. So I'll just add some orange everywhere. Here we go. Okay. Then I dry off my brush again, rinse my brush, dry off my brush on some paper towel, some tissue, my apron, whatever. And let's get some more really exciting cadmium red in there. And I'm just looking at a couple just splashes, you know, let things happen. Don't be too worried when you paint. Let, let a little free fun things happen. You know, the watercolor splashing around. You could lift up some splashes if you don't think they look great or there's too many splashes and you just want a few. That's fine. Okay, now let's get in some greens. We're going to start doing some greens. Olive green, sap green. Let's get some sap green, olive green. And it looks like we have some some more lighter green like that with some cadmium lemon yellow mixed with that green. There we go. So I'm going to look around and see where there's more of that really light yellow at the tops of those buds there. So I'll do that. Okay, and some of that darker green, maybe a little bit of, I'll put a little bit of um, yellow ochre in there too. Maybe even a little bit of cobalt blue, just to darken it up a little bit on the undersides of these buds here. Then I'll make some of these stems. And again, I'm doing these quick. Can you see that? Do you see that? How I'm just going quick with these. I'm not, I'm just trying to slide my hand on my board. So I use my board as like us just sliding the hand across the board. So you have to have that working surface underneath your hand and you slide your hand across and it makes it so much easier to get these lines accurate. Just like that. A couple splashes. And I think we're getting close to finished here. Again, let's not use too much paint, too much work, too much fussing. Let's get it done. And now we're going to get this gorgeous flower over here. Okay, it's lighter up top. Then we have some purple. It's a little bit of uh, shadow there. And you can even, as you go, we'll go in and darken up some areas.
here we go. Perfect. A little more of those darks. Burnt umber. Ivory black. Payne's gray. If you paint over a stem, like I did here, you can just lift this up quick with some tissue. You make a little, take your tissue and kind of mold it into like a point and then just go over the top of this like that. Then you get some more darks here. Burnt umber, ivory black, Payne's gray, burnt umber, burnt sienna. And then you just go around it like that on each side. Just like that. Some shadowing. Some more cadmium red under here. And I paint around that stem there. That's a little darker, that red there. So I add some purple. Like that. Straight paint. Lots of tons of paint. I'm going to just fill my brush. Tons of just paint, straight paint, no water. Just so I can get some more really powerful, beautiful red color here. Like that. Here and there too. Maybe I want to leave this a little bit more. Not as exciting. There we go. So I hope you can see how easy that was. Look how easy that was. Simple. Um, if you want to have a little more excitement to this, even going beyond, you can add a little more purple shadowing here and there. Over here, I think we need shadowing there. If we just follow that picture, we can see there's more shadows over here. There's some more shadows under there, under this side. So add a little bit of darker wash under there. Then we can maybe to finish up, we might be careful to um, take a little bit of uh, water and just we'll wipe up our palette just a little bit so we can make some fresh colors if we want and we don't have to worry about them getting too muddied up with different colors. So it's always a good habit. Try to wipe up the palette as you're painting. So we're going straight through on this. We're doing a la prima, straight painting right through the whole painting, start to finish. And Let's go, let's empty our water bucket because you can see the water bucket has a lot of red, reddish mixture in the water. We want to get some fresh clean water now, so let's empty this out. Then we'll go with some flat, fresh clean water, like that. And we're going to go in the same brush. We're going to do some cerulean blue, maybe with a little bit of purple. And since we're using cerulean blue, let's let's add that a little bit. So I'll just splash on some cerulean blue a little bit on the flowers. And here and there, maybe down here a little bit. So that we don't just add it in one spot. But I wanted to add some cerulean blue up here. 
just get some cerulean blue on the paper in purple. Scrub it on. No particular shape or form, just fresh clean water and then splash it on. And then maybe a little bit darker in the, by the tops of the corners up here, like that. And then bring it down and kind of blend it in a little bit. And I think if we do just that little bit of that bluish wash, that looks really beautiful, it looks great. That'll lighten up too, it'll dry lighter. And if you happen to have a problem like that, you no problem, you just take your tissue, lift it up like that. Get a fresh tissue if it starts to get paint on it. So we get a nice clean tissue. A little more blue, cerulean, splashing technique works good here just to get some variety there going, like that. And I think that's a really gorgeous style painting here, you've had fun. Have we not had fun here? We're splashing, we're putting tons of beautiful colors on our painting. We just drew some simple flower shapes on here. You can use different flower shapes. You can do roses or, um, you know, carnations or um, any other flower you like. We did uh, poppy flowers here, but you can do any, any flower you might like to, to try, daisies or, um, you know, uh, lilies. Whatever flower you like the best, you can try this painting in different styles of subject matter, different flowers, but I thought this one would look really great. I th would think you would really enjoy this straightforward approach. We'll peel off the tape here and just we'll take a look at the finished painting. When we take the tape off, you'll see how beautiful it's going to look framed out with that white paper. And I'm using very, uh, I'm using Strathmore paper here. So this is Strathmore water, uh, watercolor paper. And there we have it. And I'll just peel this off, the top piece here, and we'll move this over to the center. Maybe I'll lift up my... And you can draw and paint right from this finished painting if you like. And if you see something, you can always, I noticed there's maybe a dark here that I didn't quite capture, so you can add in a dark if you, a little bit of a shadow color in the center here, like that. All right, we'll see you on the next video, everyone. Thanks.